Hi, everybody. It's Adam with HeartValveSurgery.com, and we are at the Mitral Conclave in New York. I am thrilled to be joined by Dr. Mark Gerdish, who is the Chief of Cardiac Surgery at Franciscan Health in Indianapolis, Indiana. Dr. Gerdish, thanks for being with me today. Hey, it's such a pleasure, Adam. We're at a great meeting, too, by the way. Great meeting. Yeah. We are seeing a lot of research come out. Yeah. You're sharing some new research. We also get questions from patients at this meeting. We got one that came in, Dr. Gerdish, from Mark. And he asks, I'm 87 years old. I've had an aortic valve replacement in July. I then needed a mitra clip in October. Now I have been diagnosed with severe mitral valve regurgitation again. I'm investigating less invasive surgical treatments. I feel like I'm a walking time bomb. Do you have any data on mortality for age groups? Sure, so first, Mark, let's start with you're not a walking time bomb. Uh, I don't want you to live in fear every day. You do have a badly leaking mitral valve that's going to have to be addressed. Uh, but the likelihood of something really dramatic happening suddenly is pretty small if you're feeling okay-ish right now. Now, you're probably short of breath. You're probably limited aerobic capacity. I don't know about your other conditions. Those will play a role in our conversation. But being 87 is only one factor. It's one potential risk factor. So I've operated on plenty of people in their 80s and early 90s and actually up to 96. So you, that is not a reason that you can't have treatment. The other things that'll play a role are what kind of shape your heart's in overall right now, how the rest of it's working. Uh, if you have any what we call comorbid conditions, so diabetes, obesity, hypertension, sleep apnea, other metabolic disorders, problems with your kidneys, all of those things will play a role in defining the risk. And all of that can be put together into a rational kind of algorithm for you to kind of determine based on how you live your life and what you're willing to put at risk in order to address the problem. Um, typically, in your scenario, if we had someone who'd already had their aortic valve operated, uh, we might go through a minimally invasive approach to address the mitral valve. Uh, it has a clip on it now. So having operated several of those patients who had clips already, sometimes we get the clip off and repair the valve. Sometimes we just replace the valve, but we would have to do whatever would give you a definitive, absolute, I'm finished and fixed result. Uh, if not minimally invasive, then going back through the same incision, that is fine too. And this all depends on your specific anatomy, how we access your vascular system in order to put you on the heart-lung machine, uh, and then what kind of, uh, if you have any disease in your, in your blood vessels or outside of the heart. So those are all things that we would have to completely assess. But certainly being 87 is not a reason not to have heart surgery being 87 and having a lot of other things going on could potentially change that. But again, it just, it's a matter of putting it into risk stratification so you can understand what your opportunity is. Well, well, Mark, I hope that helped you. I know Dr. Gerdish helped me learn about risk, specific patient anatomy, age, and the possibility of a minimally invasive procedure after two prior cardiac operations. It's just, once again, so amazed by all the wonderful things you and your team at Franciscan Health are doing. Okay. And thanks for being with us today and have a great rest of the meeting. Appreciate it. Hi everybody, it's Adam. I hope you enjoyed that video. And don't forget, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel. Watch the next two educational videos coming up on your screen or click the blue button to visit heartvalvesurgery.com.